congratulations on the film. Thank you. Going right back to the start, um, does the fact you're taking on a character who's known in pop culture change your approach at all, or is it very much? Business oh, future? yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that you always want to get that balance right of honouring what went before, but also kind of keeping it fresh and new. But I think that also it's been 27 years, you know, mm -hmm. since the original and things have, have changed and progressed. And um, what I did want to keep is how Princess Jasmine made me feel as mm -hmm. a, as a you know, eight, at eight years old. Um, I wanted to keep that feeling because she was one of my favorite princesses growing up, like genuinely, because mm -hmm. I saw myself in her and I could, I could relate to her. Um, and she just made me feel empowered. So I wanted to keep that feeling, but also um, make her even more ambitious. And, you know, she wants to become the leader. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's her objective at the beginning of the movie. And I think that that's something that's uh, important and uh, new. It does a little bit. Yeah, I tried to kind of cancel out the noise in a way. I, I decided I wasn't going to watch the animation after my first callback. You know, I'd grown up with this. I knew it really well. So I just didn't want it uh, that close to me. And uh, I wanted to make it my own. So you just start to remove kind of the exterior noise and really focus on the character arc, the story, the themes, uh, things that make you hone in. Yeah, and because obviously the relationship between Aladdin and Princess Jasmine is so crucial to this, um, how did it go into, did you do a lot of preparation beforehand with Naomi Scott before filming started? Or was it just yeah. a rapport on? So? Yeah, I mean, we met when we were both testing. Uh, so even before we got the jobs, we had met. And uh, we really felt like we, you know, we both represented the characters the best out of, out of uh, you know, everyone that was there. And thankfully, we both got it, and uh, we spent a lot of time together. I mean, we lived in the same uh, apartment uh, building uh, in different apartments, so we'd often go to each other's flats and, and have lunch and dinner and, and discuss. And with uh, Will Smith, it feels his performance is quite loose. It feels like there might have been some improv on set. Yeah. So how was it? How was that relationship where you sometimes just couldn't? like a joke maybe took you off, off guard or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, well, Will riffs a lot, so you kind of have to learn to stay in character. But uh, we had one scene together, which is called the jam scene now, yeah. uh, that we improvised. And uh, Guy was an absolute uh, champion in trusting us with that moment and allowing us to kind of just uh, take over and, and see what happens. So it's it's a, it's a beautiful moment that I'll remember forever. <laughs> Great. Um, the Was there anything along that line, was there anything that you filmed and then didn't end up getting in the final cut of the film? Because there was rumors that there was a new duet, wasn't it? Oh, it absolutely. Yes, we shot a lot of stuff that, that didn't make it. There was a new duet then, that uh, me and Naomi sang together. And, uh, you know, I had to learn how to juggle and, and uh, in fact, I had to learn how to play the oud, which is that classical Middle Eastern guitar or, or string instrument. And uh, in the end, actually, it's Naomi that plays it in the yep. film. So uh, a lot of things get changed. Hope you get to do on a f film in future and then you've done all the training. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still juggle. People ask me to juggle. So yeah. hey. How does it feel? Because obviously she gets her own, you get a brand new song to introduce into Aladdin know. Cannon, which is a kick-ass moment. It's a fantastic performance. Thank you. Um, is that perhaps more in intimidating than taking on like a whole new world because it's something so new? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think a whole new world, there's a whimsical feeling and a, and a, and a joyful feeling to it that I think as long as you, um, it's almost like just enjoying it mm. and going for the ride. I think that that, you have to just enjoy it. So there wasn't, I didn't actually feel as much pressure on that one, funnily mm. enough. Um, I think that for Speechless, I did feel the weight of the message of the song. Yeah. I think the message is so powerful, you know, the idea that, you know, she's not gonna go speechless and, um, you know, you do have a voice and you should speak up against injustice. And I think everyone can relate to the idea of being shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I guess, did I feel the pressure? I think I, I think because it was new, I felt you feel a bit of freedom to really make it your own. You know, there's not someone that's gone before you. So I think that ultimately I was just really excited to to make it feel raw mm. and, and kind of, and you know, she's angry in that yeah. moment. Um, so yeah, hopefully achieve that. <laughs> Great. Um, and obviously you take on a Disney classic, but mm. is there perhaps another one in Disney canon outside of Aladdin that you'd love to oh. do? 
well, that I'd love to do yeah, or yeah, that yeah. I just perform, love. Or just oh, love oh. perform, just sing Ooh, anyway. I'd love to do a Disney villain one day. Nice. That would be so much fun. Um, but but I also had like, I mean, you know, I loved Mulan. Like I cannot wait to see because um, they're obviously redoing Mu- yeah. Mulan as well. Um, Mulan was just one of my faves and Pocahontas, which I think I'm beginning to just realize how much impact these Disney heroines, princesses had on like my generation of girls, you know? I think that that's something that's so incredible and now I'm like, wow, I get the opportunity to, we get the opportunity to potentially inspire a whole new generation. Like it really does stick with you and the magic that these Disney movies carry is is really incredible and um, it really does stick with you. And just finally, it's still quite a rarity in these days to have such a diverse cast Mm. on a big blockbuster. How do you feel? Do you feel that's changing at all? Or oh, absolutely. Kind of yeah. I really do. I think it is. I think that people are just, they're, they're, you know, they're just becoming more open-minded to what people want to see, mm. you know. Um, and I think that that's so incredible. We're kind of uh, busting these myths of, you know, oh, well, this won't sell or this won't sell. It's like, no, it will, you know. <laughs> Beauty and the <laughs> Beast made this much. Uh, yeah. Wonder Woman, <laughs> Black Panther, you know. All of these examples that are just kind of breaking those ceilings and yeah. just... Uh, which I think is just really important because I think people want to see, they want to see themselves, you yeah. know, um, and there's there's a whole big world out there. So there's lots of different people to represent. I hope so. I think we're trying to, obviously, w- this film represents our effort to try to change that in the industry. And, and Disney's one of the biggest Hollywood studios. So I hope uh, Disney continues to do this and other Hollywood studios look at this and, and uh, learn that you can cast people of color and ethnic diverse groups and, and still have a very successful film. So we'll see.